In September, we debated the federal government's attempt to move away from cash bail for crime suspects. Critics of bail argue it's unfair to low-income suspects who often can't come up with the 10% of bail necessary to get released on bond. Here in California, the state legislature is taking it up. State Senator Bob Hertzberg of the San Fernando Valley has introduced a bill to reform bail in state court cases. Good morning, Senator Hertzberg. Good to have you with us today. Very Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for always being such a great voice of the civic discussion. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So uh, specifically, what reforms are you proposing to the bail system? Well, it really goes to what you said, this underlying issue of money bail. Um, it's a constitutional right in California. It's not the case in the federal government, which is we're not opposing, at least at this point, to eliminate bail. But the idea is that there's, you know, 63 percent of the inmates sitting in county jails are awaiting sentence uh, trial or sentencing because they don't got the money. So what we're doing is we've got a very large coalition. We've just introduced a bill here in the Senate. And Rob Bonta, who's a member of the California Assembly from Northern California, has a mirror image bill. And we're having discussions with a wide variety of folks, left and right, trying to figure out what those details are. But the underlying notion is is to eliminate the money bail system in California um, for poor people. That means if you're rich and you want to bail out, you can do it. But if, if you uh, are poor, you shouldn't be sitting in jail if you're not a, a flight risk or a public safety risk. And how do you determine if someone's a flight risk? What, what kind of um, reliable criteria can a judge use to decide that? Well, there's very sophisticated risk assessment tools. Washington, D.C. has done it now for two decades. Kentucky, other states, the federal government, where literally you look to factors um, of people's lives, how long they've lived in the community, whether they're married, do they have children, are they employed, are they being treated for mental health or substance abuse. There's 70 factors that go into a database that calculate that risk that can determine whether somebody's a flight risk, whether somebody's a risk to public safety or, or to a flight risk, whether they really have substantial ties to the community. And, of course, it's also the nature of the crime. Well, um, one of the points that I've always heard about bail, too, is that it, it's sort of a testament to how established someone is in the community. So so he or she might not have the money themselves to post for bond, but between family members, friends, people who believe in them, that money may you know well be there for them to be able to, to post bond. Um, if you have someone who, because of limited means, they can't do it themselves, um, I mean, it should if they're not rooted enough to be able to call on other people who, who you know, believe in them to attest to them, should they still be able to, to get out without posting something? You can be rooted in the community. You just might not have a lot of rich friends. You know, I mean, that's the test. I, the idea is, is, is societal level. The fundamental question, should money be that determination or not? We did, there was a study just recently done last year by the Federal Reserve Bank that says uh, a large percentage of Americans would have a hard time coming up with more than $400. They'd have to literally borrow it from friends or sell something. That's the question. And more importantly, looking at the larger societal factors and what the costs are, let, let's, let's take a look, for example, at your car is parked on the street. Now it gets towed. you got to get it out of one of those tow stations that cost you your arm and your leg. You can't pay your rent. All these other factors in your life that while well, you're sitting in jail and you, and you can't move. In Santa Clara County, they, they've had a monitoring system that costs the um, – county $15 per day as opposed to the $204 per day for the inmates to remain behind bars. So the, the bottom line is, what's society about? I mean, we're trying to protect the public, fair call, and we should make that be the case. But the flip side is, where you have so many people in jail, where it's costing so much money, where there's so many places around the country where there, there are success stories uh, um, of alternatives, whether they're monitoring programs, court reminder dates, risk assessments. Well, why shouldn't you, when it deals with somebody's liberty, not engage in those lesser uh, approaches? Who pays for monitoring if if there's some sort of active monitoring program in lieu of bail? Is is that cost absorbed by the public? Well, that's a question. I mean, that, that's been one of the big challenges uh, uh, lately. A lot of these monitoring programs have been charged to the to the to the accused or to the defendant. It, it depends. Uh, you know, the approach here, and certainly what Santa Clara County does, is that they pay for the monitoring. But 
but $15 as opposed to $204 is a much better deal for the taxpayers. We're talking with State Senator Bob Hertzberg of the San Fernando Valley. The Democrat has introduced a bill in the state Senate which seeks to reform California's bail system. Also with us, a member of the California Bail Agents Association, a bail bondsman for 34 years, Topo Padilla. Thank you, sir, for being with us. It's good to be here with you. Uh, so uh, why not allow for alternate forms of assuring someone comes back to court um, so that they are, are not just you know held if they can't come up with the cash? Well, the problem is th- this movement is not only here in California. It's across this country, and it's rampant, being pushed by some billionaires who want to turn our whole program into their program, what they have in their socialist countries. And it is not about finding alternatives. It is about abolishing bail. It is about abolishing a, one of the greatest things that this criminal justice system in the United States has, and that is bail. Because what are we seeking? What are we seeking is justice, justice for the victim or justice for the defendant. And if we want to have justice best be served, it is best by having that defendant in court. And that's what we in the bail industry do. What about, though, active monitoring, as Senator Hertzberg was talking about, where you have some sort of an ankle monitor, something like that, that's comparatively inexpensive to make sure that someone doesn't flee? Well, that's something that uh, Senator Hertzberg, the ACLU, and everybody else ought to jump up and down about. You're talking about taking a person that has not been convicted of a crime. He may not even have gone to court yet. And you're talking about now having the government monitor him, his whereabouts, uh, via phone calls or probationary type of status, and or at worst, GPS monitoring. Our government is now going to monitor you. They haven't even been convicted. And and that I find a tra- travesty, not to mention the $15 sounds really good. It does sound great, except currently, right now, the ratio is one officer for 15 defendants. So that would be one officer. So nobody's calculated in the cost of the deputies or officers that are going to be monitoring these people at the taxpayer's expense. And that that's the big number. That why, why would it take one officer per 15 people to, to monitor? That seems like quite a ratio. That statistic comes from a couple of the departments that have these type of probationary, pretrial probationary um, programs already in place, whether it's their unions lobbied, got it or whatever, I don't know. But that's what they do. It's one to 15. OK. And and wouldn't it be better, though, um, to have the person give up that degree of civil liberties to know where they are versus sitting in a jail cell awaiting trial? Well, I, I guess we have to look at it this way. What is the uh, what is the goal? The goal is when somebody is arrested, they are just not plucked off the street by the police and thrown in jail. And I understand there's all these statistics about, you know, 63, I hear 63 percent of the people in custody are, are pretrial and, and they're sitting there. What well, those statistics aren't talking about is the people that are already sentenced on another crime or people that have holds for other reasons. So that that's something that we have to look at. So that number pairs that number down. Now, the people... And I, I really and we're going to work with Senator Hertzberg and Assemblyman Bonta because I don't think either one of them have been told some of the other part of this story. And that is this justice. We want justice for who? For the victims and for society, as well, again, as the defendant. So I got to tell you, I have talked to a lot of my clients and believe me, they're not like ready to sign up for a GPS monitor um, pre-conviction. We're talking with bail bondsman Topo Padilla uh, with us uh, from Sacramento area, Bob Hertzberg, who is state senator, Democrat from Van Nuys. I'd like to hear from you as an Air Talk listener. What do you think? Would you like to see the bail system reformed, or do you worry that alternative methods would mean more people fleeing and not showing up for their trials? 866 893 KPCC, 866 893 5722. You can also comment on the AirTalk page, kpcc.org. We'll be back right after a live update from Hetty Lynn Hurdies. Good morning, it's Air Talk. I'm Larry Mantle. Coming up in our second hour, the end of Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. 
The circus is going to close up shop come May. We're going to open up the phones for you to share your memories of the circus, pro and con, that coming up in our second hour. Right now, we're talking about legislation in Sacramento that would reform the bail system in the state and find alternate methods to cash bail, particularly for lower-income suspects who don't have the ability to post the 10% necessary to get a bail bond to be released. What do you think of that idea? Do you think it would lead to increasing numbers of no-show for trials, or do you think that uh, people could be monitored sufficiently that they would show up for their trials? 866-893-KPECC or the AirTalk page, kpecc.org. Chris in La Quinta, you're on AirTalk. Hi, I was uh, arrested in my misspent youth, and I was able to come up with bail. Uh, it was a misdemeanor. The fellows I was with, some of the fellows I was with were not able to come up with bail. So they had to languish until their pretrial or arraignment or whatever you call it. And that cost them, you know, that cost them their jobs. It, it really affected uh, their relationship, you know, with their family. And for such a minor thing, it caused a lot of damage just due to lack of money. And um, they, you say a minor thing, and they couldn't uh, get the judge to release them on their own recognizance, even, even though they had family and were rooted in the community? Uh, correct. And I remember one fellow in particular, he, uh, he was there because he was unable to pay his fine for a, uh, a DUI. And, you know, the judge gave him uh, two weeks in county jail, which... You know, he was there because he wanted to work something out. I don't know what the, you know, the judge's problem was, but it seems like we've gone to a society that really tries to generate revenue from people in these situations. All right, Chris, I appreciate your call. State Senator Bob Hertzberg, uh, your your thoughts on this, and, and particularly the rate of bail in California. How does it compare to other states? It's high, and, um, you, you know, look, Chris, what Chris said is exactly what we're trying to get to. Uh, what, you know, what Topo said about justice, you're just giving somebody a choice. If someone doesn't want a, a monitoring system or something else to impose upon their life, they can write a check and post bail, and they don't have it. This, at least they can go to work. They can pick up their kids at school. You know, They can pull their car off the street so it doesn't get ticket, or whatever the case may be. The question, look, there's no effort here. You know, Some people talking about getting rid of money bail, that hasn't been my issue, but it's a larger, a larger coalition. You know, if somebody has the money and they want to get out of jail, if it was me and I had the money, I'd be out of there in a lickety split. Uh, but but uh, other people don't have those options, and that the test is not you know that should that be a factor? Look, I came back to government. I was out for twelve years, and I came back to work on the tough stuff that that you know there's no political contributors for, there's no voters for, but where there's unfairness, and I find a lot of it in the court system. Last year and the year before, I did the traffic ticket amnesty program. I'm doing that again, and I'm looking for places where there's just the system doesn't work. And the only thing I would suggest for the bail industry, and I've talked to a lot of the folks in the bail industry, they don't really care about these people because they're not writing them a check to, to, to provide in the bail. They're sitting in jail. They can't afford it. They just want to make sure that for the wealthier customers who can't afford to get out, who don't want to sit in jail over the weekend, that they can make a fee. And I don't bother. I, that doesn't bother me uh, personally. It was other people in the coalition that have different views, but that doesn't bother me. The key here is if you're poor, should you be punished if you're not? A risk to society? That's the question, and cost government so much money. Uh, Topo Padilla of the California Bail Agents Association, your thoughts? Yeah, I got to respond to that. Uh, I want to just uh, give you an example. Two people, two guys, go into a pizza parlor and they walk in there with bats and they hit a few people and hit some kids. One of them goes to college, rip mom and dad are rich. The other kid didn't, wasn't so fortunate in life. They both go to jail for assault with a deadly weapon. In the proposal, one would have one would get released for free because he's poor. The other guy would have to bail. That becomes unconstitutional. I mean, now if you're if you have money, you know there's some constitutionality. So we've got to just throw all this rich poor stuff out of it, out of this argument. We really truly do. Case. We have to work on bail schedules. Hold, hold on, Senator Hertzberg. Yeah. 
We'll come back to you. We've got to work on bail schedules, get them to where they are lower. We, the bail industry, went to the, the Little Hoover Commission in 2011, studied this, and tried to get bail, bail reform done with bail schedules. The legislature wouldn't have anything to do with it. Senator Hertzberg. Yeah, I, I, look, the, both sides, there's no rich poor there. If the, if the rich guy in that example of both persons going into that bar and do what they did, both have the exact same rights, except the rich person, if they want to get out sooner and bail out, they can. They don't have to. They can have a risk assessment hearing just like the poor person and not have to post a bail. That they certainly are exact. There's no constitutional issue there. It's But if the rich person wants to get out and not go through that process or whatever they might be, they have the right to post under California's constitution to post bail if they so choose. Uh, you know, there's so many examples like that. The question is, should money be a factor in this situation. That's really what we're trying to, to, to get to here uh, uh, in, in this situation. We have a significant numbers of people in the criminal justice system who have ties to Mexico. We have, it's not uncommon for people to flee to Mexico after they are suspected of committing a crime and, and have to be apprehended there if they're caught. Are you concerned, Senator Hertzberg, uh, that, you know, being so close to Mexico that for some people they, they may be a flight risk and feel it's it's uh, in their best interest to leave the country rather than stand trial. Well, the federal system has done this for decades, and it's worked pretty well. Other jurisdictions have done the same thing, and it's worked pretty well. Uh, these aren't. It's not just you're just letting these people out. There's a hearing. There's a judge. There's a determination. They go through a process uh, uh, to make a determination if somebody has close ties to another country, wherever that country is, Canada, let's say, or whatever it might be. Uh, uh, the judge will make those determinations and make an assessment. And if the judge thinks they're a flight risk, then then they're in jail unless they can post bail. And then then of course, like Roman Polanski, they can write a big check and then leave anyway uh, and and lose their money. So so, so what does that look like? I mean, just because you put the money up, the, the notion behind bail is, well, since I have a check, I put up an asset, I'm going to stay here because I want to protect the asset. That's the assumption behind bail. You can still run. There's no monitor on you whatsoever. You can run. This could actually be a better system. It, 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 the only question is, am I willing to lose that money? Topo Padilla. I've got a great response to that. In Sacramento, luckily enough, we've got a, a system here that we can get these statistics. And I'm not – statistics are statistics. But when I did a snapshot report one day, there was 49,102 warrants in the system. Of those 49,102, only 262 of those people were out on bail. The balance of those people were out on pretrial release where they signed their signature. And the senator brings up a great point. He just said something, and I, I'm glad you did. Why do people go to court when they're out on bail? Because, number one, they got skin in the game. And I know you know about that. They got skin in the game. But more importantly, they have family or friends that have co-signed, that indemnified their appearance in court. And I'm going to tell you, when I did this report, for a one-year period, only 14 people had not been returned to court in Sacramento. This uh, Two years ago, it was nine people. So – it, the evidence is there that bail does work, and most importantly, it brings their family and their friends into the participation of making sure this person appears in court. Uh, we're talking with a bail bondsman Topo Padilla, who for 34 years has worked in that field. He's a member of the California Bail Agents Association, which is opposed to Senator Bob Hertzberg's bill, which would reform the bail system here in California. Let's talk with Mark in West L.A. You're on Air Talk. Uh, hi, uh, Senator. You mentioned that Kentucky and Washington, D.C. do not have cash bail systems. I was wondering if you are aware of any other countries that have a no cash bail system and also what statistics or metrics you would use to assess their success. Thank you, Mark. Senator Hertzberg. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I believe the only country that has a similar bail system, it's exactly nobody has a bail system like we do, except I think the Philippines is the only country on the planet other than the United States of America that you buy your freedom with a check. Um, everybody else has different processes like, like ours where judges make determinations as to whether someone should be on their own and don't have to write the, the right to basically gain their freedom by writing a check. Well, in fairness, I mean, there, there are countries and sadly many of them where people are just thrown into jail and don't have any due process. <laughs> so we wouldn't want to emulate that. If I can respond to that, you know, I yeah, often hear there's only two countries, 
And I got to tell you, and I, I know the senator will agree with me. There's no greater country on this earth than the United States of America. Why in the good? Why would we want to follow anybody else? They follow us. And this system works because we are a society of justice, and we give people justice. And I have, over the years, have given hundreds of thousands of people justice. I just had a gentleman walk in here yesterday, been released for 20, he got 20 years in prison. He walked out, and I talked to him about this. And he said, if I was not on bail, I never would have gone in to turn myself in to go do 20 years. And, Senator, you just used the word buy, buy their freedom. No, they are paying for their freedom. They're paying, they pay for their freedom. That's whether they got to pay for me or pay for a lawyer. If, if we want to get rid of injustice, why should, why did, you know, for instance, O.J. Simpson got to hire nine lawyers. Every person that's charged with what he's charged with should get the government to pay for nine lawyers just like he did. And I, don't, I know you don't want that, but that's an example. Okay. I don't like the word buy and pay. Uh, David in Beverly Hills says, I've been to jail and been bailed out. The system is so overcrowded it needs to be reformed. Only the truly dangerous need to be held. You can share your comments. Airtalk page, kpcc.org. Alexis in Hollywood writes, I'd like to compare the taxpayer cost of an ankle bracelet to that of feeding people who can't afford bail. And in the interest of justice, how is it just to keep people who've not been convicted of a crime in prison because of money? The bail business is a big money business. Therein lies the resistance, not an interest in justice. We're at 866-893-KPECC or the AirTalk page, kpecc.org. Um, let's see. We have um, Romeo in Riverside says, I made bail a long time ago, $5,000 to a bondsman, and he didn't do anything beyond uh, post the bond. I was uh, found not guilty, but still out of the money. Uh, uh, Romeo, that, of course, is the basis of it, because that's how the bail bonds people make money, is because uh, not everybody shows up. Topo Padilla, um, you guys, of course, are, are widely disliked. Uh, so, you know, share with us the defense of the industry. We are not widely dis- disliked. We are widely not understood. And I invite Senator Hertzberg and Senator Assemblyman Bona, anybody to come out, come over to our office, come out with us and chase a fugitive and understand what we do. You know, when I hear this big money thing, let me tell you something. My father and I own our bail, our bail bond company. And more, I think it's right around half the people that own bail bond companies in California are women. And a great majority of them are minorities helping the people in their community. I don't want to hear about this big money thing. That is a, that is a shamble. That's, a, that's, that's not true. We work day in and day out seven days a week doing what we do at no cost to the taxpayers, and we are a very, very effective tool to make sure that people go to court. And if we want to continue to see justice be served better and then to respond to that last gentleman's thing, we need to speed up the criminal justice system. Why are people in custody for three and four and five weeks on misdemeanors? They should be taking care of those cases quicker. And if we want to do anything, let's help fund the judiciary and speed up the criminal justice system. JSK asks on the Air Talk page, would there be a different standard for post-conviction appeals? Senator Hertzberg? Well, yeah, of course, because you've already been convicted. There's a, there's a completely different set of standards. But you know, one of the things just I just want to raise, one of David or Alex, somebody had mentioned in the comments uh, that you, you mentioned, was the overcrowded jails. Look, at the end of the day, Mr. Padilla, we want to get to the truth. We want to deal with, with solving a problem that costs taxpayers less money, that makes sure that the society is safe. And part of that problem is we've changed the law in California because the United States Supreme Court said that the state system was overcrowded. It's twice as many inmates. There's people stacked six high, and they said it's unconstitutional. So we have to basically not put as many people in the penitentiary. That's putting more pressure on the jail system. So you've got sometimes you have felons sitting in those jails, and those jail cells are being held by people who can't make bail. We have a larger obligation in protecting the Republican society as lawmakers, and that is to look at cost to taxpayers, larger risks, constitutionality of the system, and all of those things. And the question is, given the data that we've seen so far, and we'll do the homework, and we're going to listen to everybody, and I, yes, I have been out in the, with a number of folks, and i got a ton of friends of mine. I was a great old friend of B. Hernandez, if you remember her, Mike Hernandez's son in the bail business, and I get it, and I understand okay. what the industry is about. But the bottom line is, 
how do we create a fair and just system and that's not just put keeping people behind bars? Senator Hertzberg, thank you very much. Bob Hertzberg of the San Fernando Valley, Topo Padilla of the California Bail Agents Association. More to come on Air Talk.